1954 was a landmark year for International Harvester in that they changed the sheet metal and went to this kind of aircraft styling, this streamlined look, and all the sheet metal was changed on the 100, actually the Cub, the Cub through the 400. So the 100 was the old Super A, which actually was, for a little while, it was called a, a Super A1, and, and I'll talk more about this in another video, but the Super A1 came out in, in early 54. The sheet metal wasn't quite right for the 100, so what they did is they took the 100 motor, put it in a Super A, and then used a Super C hood and grill, because what happened was with that new 100 motor is it had a water pump and a taller radiator, so the old Super A sheet metal doesn't fit. So if you have a, a Super C and a Super A, and or you have one or the other, and you think that you can just buy the, the tin and put it on there, you'll find that it doesn't quite fit. You can you can kind of monkey it on there and, and make it work, but it's not it's not right. But in 1954, International Harvester, they came out with the, the Cub, which was streamlined, the 100, 200, 300, and 400. The 200, essentially the Super C, no real difference other than the, the sheet metal and about uh, three quarters of a horsepower, really nothing else of, of value of significance for the 200. 100, as I told you, had a whole new engine over the Super A. The 300 was the Super H with a, with a TA, or it could be had with a TA. International was gonna have be the, the Stage 4 Super H or the Stage 4 H. The 300 and 400 had a new restyled dash and a push button starter, so it was a lot easier to start the tractors. It was a lot easier to see what was going on. The dash was tapered and you had all your controls, your levers, everything was really ergonomically placed. The Super H had a 164 cubic inch motor and the 300 had a 169 cubic inch motor, so a little bit different. And both the 3 and 400 were available with optional live power takeoff and it was 540 standard. The Stage 3 never came out. It was going to have a torque amplifier, but it, it didn't happen. Stage 3 Super M was actually the Super MTA, which only was, only was out for a year. And then they had the, of course, the, the Super MTA became the 400. And really, there's no difference between a Super MTA and a 400 other than a humongous price tag and the sheet metal is a little different. So if you don't care about nostalgia and you just want a good international tractor with a lot of oomph, about 50 horsepower, a 400 tractor is a, is a great buy. They could be like $4,000 cheaper than a, than a Super MTA. So unless you've got a lot of sentimental value and have to have a Super MTA, they're a really good bargain. The reason behind that was because they improved the hydraulics on the Super H, so they were live hydraulics rather than transmission driven. So they were before the transmission up here instead of where they always were before, which was down here. 300 was available in a utility, a high utility, the row crop obviously, and you could get a whole host of different front ends for it. So it was really a nice tractor. And the 300 was International's answer to the Fordson NAA. It came out in 52 for the 53 model year as the Jubilee, and then in 54 it was just the NAA. And then after that it became the 600. The Deluxe Seat made its debut, the Cub Low Boy and the 300. And then when they came out with the, the 350, 330, they still didn't have it on the row crops, but the utility had this nice seat on it. The 300 utility, you could get that as a straight five speed. You could get it with the TA, which was a 10 speed. And typical of IH, they love to release things before they were quite ready. So when they put out the 330, instead of the 350, all it was was a 340 motor shoved into a 350. So they, it was the 330, but it was the same tractor. And you could get different motors on the, on the 100 series, which wasn't available really on all the models before. So with the 300 and 400, you could get a diesel, you could get LP gas or a straight gas job. And then the 100 became the 130. Wasn't a whole lot of difference between the 100 and the 130 other than they put some white behind the farm all and whitened up the nose. It was the same tractor and that became the 140 later on. So not really much changed all the way through 1979 as far as that model tractor goes, except for some sheet metal. Of course, the fast hitch was available in 1954 on all the model tractors from the Cub up through the 400. When they came out with the 50 series, the 350, 450, the, the 100 and 200 became the 130 and 230. The Cub stayed the same. It got the same white treatment in the background as the other tractors, but virtually unchanged. But the fast hitch was available from the Cub all the way up through the 450 as well as power steering on the bigger tractor. So for those of you who don't know, the 350 became the 460 and the 450 became the 560. And of course, by then, like I had told you in an earlier video, McCaffrey, who had been in charge, didn't really believe in pushing equipment to its breaking point in testing. He just wanted to get it out the door as fast as possible. 
So we all know about the 46560 failures, which IH fixed, but their fate was sealed. They had so many problems. And then there were other problems that came out too with the 460 and 560 and International fixed all of them. So if you were to buy a 46560 now, it'd probably be fine. You probably wouldn't have the old problems because it had probably been recalled and fixed. But at the time, in, in 1958, 59, they were about 300 hours into it before they started breaking. So, you know, that might have even got them to 1960. And by then, John Deere came out with their new generation tractors. People People just said to hell with IH and they started buying John Deere's. In a future video I'll show you the new generation of tractors. I'll also show you that the generation 2 tractors are some of my favorite John Deere tractors. John Deere came out in 1960 with their new generation and then in 72 with their gen 2 and then in 78 they came out with the iron horses and then after that it was the long green line which was the 50 series those were some of the the most classic john deere tractors i think that they had and, and i will show you those in a future episode the iron horses the 50 series the of course not to be forgotten ih also had the w4 and the super w4 the w6 and the super w6 which were the h and the m versions of the wheatland tractor so the w was wheatland then they had the wd which was wheatland diesel so the wd6 became the the 400 so the w4 kind of went away the wd4 was the super version of the super h in a wheatland and then they had the w6 became a super w6 and then they had the super wd6 which was a wheatland diesel super m version which became the 400 so they had a wheatland 400 and then they had a wheatland 450. i'm going to save all the material for the 130 and the 100 for another video it's just too much information to pack into one so i hope you enjoy the video thank you for watching and if you haven't already please take a moment and hit the subscribe button Thank you.